a video walking you through the solutions to the review worksheet. So the first question is exactly a recall question, just a memory question. Anytime you have an or probability statement, it is going to involve addition. There are two versions of this formula that we have talked about. They both start the same, right? These are identical right now. You have to remember to subtract overlap if there is overlap. So if the two events share some outcomes, right? Like uh, in a deck of cards, kings and hearts have overlap because there's a card called the king of hearts. So if A and B are overlapping, then you need to subtract the overlap. But if the two sets have no overlaps, so like in a Venn diagram, they'd be completely separate from each other. Like this is A and this is B and there's nothing that they have in common. That's called being disjoint or mutually exclusive. So you only have to subtract overlap if there is overlap. Question two is an and statement. And statements and probability require multiplication. Both of these formulas start out with probability of A. They both have a time sign. If you just multiply by the probability of B, that is because the two events were independent. However, if the two events are dependent, and that is to say that the outcome of event A has influence on the probability of B happening, then this is the probability of B assuming that A already happened or the probability of B given A. That last part right here is called the conditional probability. All right, this question is about a deck of cards. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the deck of cards, you do need to familiarize yourself with it because it is an easy thing for me to ask you about where we all have the same understanding or at least can have the same understanding. It is completely fine with me if you have a deck of cards in front of you while you're taking a test, right? You can spread out the cards and like think it through. That is totally fine. 52 cards are in a standard deck of cards with four suits. Ace, King, Queen, Jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, down to 2 are the cards. So first one says find the probability of a 10 or a club. I know that or is going to mean I'm adding. I need to think, is there overlap between 10s and clubs? The answer to that is yes. So I'm going to have to subtract the overlap. So I want to think of how many 10s are in the deck, which is 4. How many clubs are in the deck, which is 13. And then how many cards are both 10s and clubs? There's one 10 of clubs. In the next problem, again, it's an or question, so that's an addition. I want to know about the probability of getting an ace. There are four aces in the deck. Or a face card. The face cards are the king, queen, and jack of each suit. So that's 12. And then I want to think, are there any aces that are face cards? And there aren't. These are disjoint sets. So I would just do that computation. And in the last one, red cards. Half the deck is red or 26 cards or black cards. Are there any cards that are both red and black at the same time? Nope. So here are my computational answers from what you just saw back here, right? It's the same work, but I just have answers. All right, in the next uh, set of problems, these are all and problems. So here I'm going to be multiplying. It says here we have a container with chips numbered one through six. So I'm picturing, you know, like little poker chips kind of chips. Okay, so these are all in a cup. You're going to pull one out, and then you're going to pull another one out, but you're not going to put the first one back. So what does that imply? It implies dependent events, so I have to keep that in mind. So the probability of drawing a 5, 1 out of the 6 chips is a 5, and then assume that the 5 is already gone, what is the probability that I then draw the 3? 1 out of the remaining 5 chips is the 3. And the next one, what is the probability of first drawing a 5? 1 out of 6, and then an even number. These three are even numbers. 3 out of the remaining 5. What is the probability of drawing a 3 and then a 3? Well, if I take out the 3 first, there isn't a 3 to draw next. So this is like 1 out of 6, but then the second thing is impossible to do. And the same thing is true with the next question. 
I can't draw the same number again because once it's gone, it's gone. The next one says, what is the probability of drawing an even number? These three were evens. And then out of the remaining five, like if one of those is gone, so like let's say the two is gone, then the odds are still all there. So those are my solutions. In question five, we're supposed to look at a look at a Venn diagram, and it says that there are 30 total, 16 play soccer, 12 swim, and eight are um, don't play either of those. So I start out with the eight that are out here. I don't know about this overlap yet, so I'm going to be thinking about that. I know that 22 people have to be in this part of the picture because eight of them are outside of that part of the picture. So I need to make sure that my inner circles add up to 22. When I look at the numbers that they gave me, I notice that it actually adds up to 28. So I'm off by six. So that must mean that six are in the overlap. If this is my soccer circle, this circle has to add up to 16, which means that 10 are over here because I already have six in the middle. This whole circle has to add up to 16 people. 10 plus 6 is 16. Over here, these are my swimmers. I said I have 12 people who swim. Within this circle, I already have accounted for 6 people. So there's another 6 here to make a total of 12. To check my work, I would add 10 plus 6 plus 6 plus 8. So this is 12 plus 8 is 20 plus 10 is 30. And that checks with my total. So I know I have the right diagram. Once I have this diagram, then I can answer the questions. So the probability that a randomly chosen person plays soccer, there are 30 people, and there are, within the soccer circle, 16 people. The probability of not swimming, okay, well, I want to disregard the people who swim. The people who swim are these folks. So the people who are outside of that swimming circle are the other people. So this is a complement, complementary probabilities. Okay, the next one says, find the probability that they play at least one of the sports. The part of the Venn diagram that that is represented by is this entire part that I now have highlighted in yellow. So I'm going to take and add 6 plus 6, which is 12, plus 10, which is 22, and say 22 out of the 30 play at least one sport. The next question twists that up a little bit, and it says, what is the probability of playing exactly one sport? Well, these folks in the overlap play two sports. So I want to take the people who play only soccer or who only swim. I do not want to include that overlap. So I would have 16 out of 30. The next question says, what is the probability of someone swimming but not playing soccer? And so within my diagram, the people who swim but are outside the soccer circle are those six only. So my answer for this part is six out of 30. All right, this is another um, card problem. Again, you can have cards in front of you if that helps. So in this one, you're replacing the card. You're taking out a card, you're looking at it, you're putting it back. That puts the deck back to the same condition it was in for the first draw. Like the second draw is going to have the same setup as the first draw. So these are going to be independent events. So I can just think about each thing as its own and multiply it. The outcome of the first draw has no bearing on the second. So how many hearts are there in the deck? There's 13 out of 52. I put the first card back in, so it's still now 52 cards, and I'd have 13. You also could say 1 4 times 1 4. Again, I want to think about uh, how many cards are in the deck here, 52. How many of them are kings? There are four kings. And then odd number, you might have to think a little bit, but there's no ones in the deck. So there's three, five, seven, nine. There's no 11. So there's four odd numbers in every suit. And there are four suits. The next one, 
an ace. There's four aces in the deck. You put the first card back in, so you're back to 52 cards. And if there's four aces, that means that there's 48 non-aces. So these are my setups, and here are my answers. Right, same exact numbers just worked up. Okay, in question, the next question, we have um, a two-way table, people who study Spanish, people who study Russian, year 10 students, year 11 students, okay? So it said there's 137 students who were asked which subject they would like to study. So I'm going to say that that's 137 total. It says that 86 of them chose Russian. So this subtotal over here is 86. 29 students in year 11 chose Spanish. So I'm going to read across the year 11 and say year 11 Spanish was 29. And 63 students in year 10 chose Russian. Now those totals are enough for you to figure out the rest of the boxes. So for instance, we kind of highlight the totals here. 63 plus something equals 86, right? You can subtract to figure that out. And just keep doing that and you should figure out these numbers. Okay, that's just adding and subtracting, my friends. Okay, and then once you have this chart, it says one of the students is chosen. Calculate the probability of choosing a student who studies Spanish. In other words, what is the probability of Spanish? That's 51 out of 137. Then they said a year 10 student is chosen. If you know you're picking someone from year 10, then you're only looking at the part of the table that I just highlighted. And they said within year 10, what is the probability of speaking Russian? So what is the probability of Russian given that you are in year 10? So Russian out of the total for year 10 is my answer. The next question says if a random student is chosen, Okay, so now when they say a random student, they mean out of all of the students. So out of these 137, what is the probability that someone picked Spanish and is also in year 10? That's that 29. Okay, this is like the extra credit question. Okay, so now go back into this problem and you can fill in the probability of Spanish, the probability of year 11 given Spanish, and multiply those together and you can see that you get this answer. So I'm just showing you that the math works. If you don't really get this one, that's okay. These you have to understand, okay? That's really important. Question eight says a committee of four people is selected from a group of 19 people. So I have this picture over here and it clearly doesn't show 19 people. I was just having you to think about like a group of folks, okay? So how many ways are there to select a committee? Now, if I'm picking a committee, does order matter? Not really. It's not like I'm assigning like your first, your second, your third, your fourth. It's not lining something up. It's just a group or a cluster. So I would say here, this is 19 choose four or 19 C4. And then part B says, if Carmen has to be one of the 19 people and she, you know, she has to be on the committee, how many ways are there to pick the committee now? So let's say that's Carmen. So now there's one fewer person, so that would be 18, and we are going to only pick three more because we already have Carmen. So those are my answers over here. This notation is just a way that you might see 19C4 written. It's just a different way of writing it. Okay, number 9 and 10. Um, if you have to pick eight out of five and then eight out of four, and you're not trying to put things in order, that's going to be a combination. So this is going to be eight C5 and eight C4. And this is a multiplication because and is involved, right? I have to pick five out of eight and four out of a different group of eight. Number 10 is going to involve a permutation because it says in a row. So I have a group of eight and I'm going to line up five of them. So here are my numerical answers for that. In number 11, this is um, moving on to the normal distribution stuff that you guys had. So here are my calculator setups. 
uh, both of these are inverse normal because you were told a percent. So if you're told a percent and you're finding the cutoff, remember that that's inverse normal. Remember that the syntax for that is to put the percent that is to the left and then the mean and then the standard deviation. Okay, percent to the left, mean, standard deviation inside there. Okay, and then it just tells you what to do. Um, I'm trying to think of what else might be tricky about that, but I don't know. So if you are confused by it, please contact me because I would love to know where you're stuck. Uh, question 12, you have one problem that is to the left, one or a lower than or less than problem, a between problem, and a to the right or a greater than problem. So one of each type. And here I have my um, work shown. These are not inverse normal, they are forward. So you're using the normal um, cumulative distribution and you put down the lower bound, the upper bound, the mean, then the standard deviation. So for a problem like the first one where there isn't a lower bound, right? I really wanna say like negative infinity until you get to 17. I'm just going to put in some very large negative and then 17 and then the mean and then the standard deviation, mean and standard deviation go there, okay? In this one that's between, you do have a specific lower and a specific upper, those are your edges. And then in this one, which was to the right, you don't have an edge at the top, right? It just keeps going for all time. So just put in a very large number as your upper. Okay, and then the last bit was about uh, binomial probability. And so this goes back a little bit, you have to remember back in the day, but this also has a calculator function, okay, for you. So they told you the probability um, of success was two thirds, right? And so the probability of failure would be one third. And you wanna figure out the probability of them living past age 70. So for instance, the probability that exactly none of them live past age 70, this zero is here and here as well. Two thirds is my probability of success. So it's opposite, one third is my probability of failure. These two exponents have to add up to this total. So if this exponent zero and I need a total of five, that makes this a five. So you can just put that in on your calculator or you can use the binomial um, distribution thing that's built into your calculator. But either way, these are the numbers that you should get. Okay, but this, what I've shown here is a perfectly fine way to type it in, no problem. And then after that, it asked you to graph your results. So be careful with what you increment this as, right? I look through your, here through my data. I don't want to count up to 50 or something. That's, that's not going to help me. My biggest values are these right here. So like 0.3-ish is as tall as I need to get. So you can see that I went up to 0.35. I want to put in the middle values here. So I'm counting by 0.05. And I just made my distribution, my graph. Okay, um, which way is this skewed? Skewed left. I hope you know that too. Okay, if you're having any problems, please contact me. Um, I'm available to hang out with you on Google Meet and answer your questions. Or you can send me a picture of your work and ask me, hey, where am I going wrong in my work? And I can write back to you. Whatever would be helpful, I want you to do really well on this last assessment. Thanks.